talk very briefly about some of these things because today is about a lot of those things and you will hear more from other speakers so I don't intend to capture any of their thunder. Let me start with attraction. Now you might be sitting there thinking, well it's all well and good for you to quote Google Ross. They're big, they're sexy, they've got a lot of money, they can do a lot of great stuff online. Well, you might be thinking, we can't do that. I'd say you'd be wrong. And I'm going to show you a little example. And I love this example because this is an unsexy job in an unsexy organisation in an unsexy part of Melbourne. <laughs> this is an online presentation for the job of parking officer at the city of Greater Dandenong. And for those of you who don't know Greater Dandenong, it's one of the, shall we say, lower socioeconomic parts of Melbourne. There's an eight minute online presentation. I don't intend to show you that, but I'm going to show you a 90 second excerpt, which will give you some idea about what's possible. Basically what I see is the main benefits of working here. If you think you'd be interested in doing this job, I probably should tell you a few things before you rush off and put a resume in. Firstly, you don't need experience in enforcement type work. I didn't have any. It's more important to the council that we have top rate people skills and can negotiate and influence others calmly and with courtesy. You also need to have reasonable English language skills written and spoken, because you need to quickly learn the road rules and interpret them and explain them and apply them. And of course, you need to be able to write detailed reports and statements. And because that information is used in court, it has to be spot on and unambiguous. So written skills are certainly very important in this role. You also need to be willing to work outdoors, rain, hail or shine. If you can do all of that, then maybe this job will suit you. Oh, you need to be reasonably fit. Okay, so if you think the job sounds good and you reckon you have the skills needed to do the job, you might be thinking you wouldn't want to do this job for a long time. Well, that's okay. Plenty of parking management officers have moved into other jobs at council, so you wouldn't be the first if you did. And Greater Dandenong actually offers help to advance our careers. So there you have it. A quick rundown of life as a parking management officer. I know it's not the job for everyone, but me, I really enjoy it. <laughs> so what's your excuse? If the city of Greater Dandenong can do that for the parking officer's job, what could you do? Let's have a look at something a bit bigger and perhaps a little bit sexier, the ADF. The Australian Defence Force needs to recruit 11,000 new candidates a year. So they've created with their creative agency, Visual Jazz, this site, defencejobsgames.com.au, where you can go online and for free play various military style games. And of course you've got the opportunity to click through and find out about enlisting in the Defence Force. <coughs> Deloitte, James Elliott spoke at the talent conference in Sydney earlier this year, and he spoke briefly about what Deloitte are doing in terms of sourcing and attracting. This is their Facebook application, which within two weeks of it being available, 50% of the Deloitte employees with Facebook pages had uploaded this, which gave the Deloitte brand a whole much bigger audience to look and see what life is like working at Deloitte. They're also on Twitter, green underscore dot. And that is also sharing what life's like at Deloitte. <coughs> Assessment technology. I want to speak briefly about that. So firstly, why is it useful? This is from the work of Dr. Charles Handler. 
He's an organisational psychologist and one of the leading recruitment thought leaders in the assessment technology area. And he simplifies it like this. The typical selection process, in other words, recruitment in the olden days, was about skills, knowledge and experience. And that's what employers see from resumes and interviews. But what employers get is what's below the waterline. And how do you really know what those things are? Even a highly skilled interviewer in a one hour period can only get a glimpse into that area. So what does assessment tell us? So again, Dr. Handler summarises it as what the person can do, what they have done, and what they want to do with respect to job and environment, which all leads us to make a conclusion, a more accurate conclusion about future performance. So how accurate is this? Is this something that vendors are pushing and pushing because it makes them a lot of money? Well, again, let's look at what the stats tell us. Assessments are their strength. So over here, poor predictions, years of experience, virtually no guarantee, no accuracy there. Academic results, unstructured interview, and reference checking. So in other words, the olden days of recruitment, just the art, you've got a one in four chance of making the correct call on the candidate. Whereas when you add various assessment technologies, right up to assessment centres, you go up to 0.7. In other words, you can triple or quadruple your chances of making the right selection when you bring science into the art. And yet sadly, a majority of organisations in Australia have no science in their assessment process. And that's why even getting one in four right is just average. And what about CRM and ATS? Well, I'm no expert there, but let me just give you an example from a story that was on shortlist a year ago. This is Foster's talking about the way in which they are building up their talent pool. In the olden days, what was the talent pool? No one knew what a talent pool was. In the olden days, if you had a job, you ran an ad and you, get a can and you got a candidate. You didn't build a pool of candidates. Whereas now, sorry, recruitment agencies have pools of candidates, but not corporates. Whereas now, Fosters are just one of many, many corporates that are building their own talent pool. And they're using proper technology to continually reach out to them. Here, job alerts, um, e-zines and so on. So that's just a skim through the science. But what about the art? Where does that fit in, Ross, you're probably asking? Well, I see it this way. The organisation is responsible for the science of recruitment. In other words, responsible for making an executive level strategic decision to invest time and money in one or more of those seven areas that I identified. The individual recruiter is responsible for the art of recruitment. In other words, what they can do at a desk level to deliver great outcomes. According to Carol Mah Mahoney, most recently Yahoo's recruitment czar, a top recruiter delivers great desk level outcomes by having the following. And as you can see, they are predominantly human skills. 